This is Eng5443, Solid Mechanics at London South Bank University. Um, and I'm looking at question four uh, in solid, the 2018 Solid Mechanics exam, which is about eccentric loading. Um, so it's this question at the top of the page. We've got a short hollow cylindrical column with various dimensions, compressive load of 500 kilonewtons, and it's going to be an eccentric load and we're not to exceed 15 mega newton, 15 megapascals um, tensile stress, or 75 megapascals uh, compressive stress. Okay, let's just take a look at how to think about this question. So this is question four. Um, it concerns a column, a cylindrical column with an off-center load F which is off center by some distance x and I hope everyone studying the module is happy remembering that that's something we can replace with a centered load, an axial load f and a bending moment of fx. So an off-center load can be replaced by an on-center load and the bending moment. That's some of the key to what we're dealing with here. The other thing I just want to sort of um, get tidied up before we start, we are looking at a cyl hollow cylindrical column. Um, so um, the hollow cylindrical column has internal diameter 160 millimeters, it's 0.16 meters, external diameter um, 10 millimeters, that's 0.21 meters. So the area is pi r outer squared minus pi r inner squared, which equals pi times, well, r is going to be 0.21 over 2 squared minus pi times 0.16 over 2 squared. Just noting that radius is a half a diameter and putting all of that into a calculator uh, 0.21 divided by 2 squared minus 0.16 divided by 2 squared is that times pi comes out as 0.0145 three square meters roughly. Um, and the second thing that we need to think about is I, the um, second moment of area, because this is really, the, we know there's a bending moment coming up, so we're going to have to deal with bending moments. And to find the second moment of area for a circle, I go to um, the section in the data sheet on simple bending, and I equals, uh, well, it's pi d to the 4 and 64 for a, hol a solid um, cylinder, and you can extend that. We've used rules before where second moments of area, you can take away a shaded area. So we're going to take away the, the effect of the middle section. So it'll be pi times 0 0.21 to the 4 on 64. That's the second moment of area for the larger outside circle, minus pi 0.16 to the 4 on 64, which equals uh, 0.21 to the 4 minus 0.16 to the 4 times pi divided by 64, 6.33 times 10 to the minus 5 meters to the 4. Okay, so we've got some numbers that we're going to end up using. And now we treat the axial load and the bending moment separately at first. The axial load um, leads to a stress which is just force over area. And force, we know from the question, is 500 kilonewtons, 500 times 10 to the 3 newtons, and area we know is 0 0.01453 meters, square meters, 
So uh, 500 E3 divided by 0 0.01453, that comes out as 34.5 megapascals to three significant figures. Um, the bending stress Uh, sigma max over y max. Again, this is on the data sheet, so do just feel you can go and look that up straight away. Equals m over i. Um, I'm going to write sigma max as a function of x, the eccentricity here. So sigma max equals well y max is the furthest distance from the center of the column that's the radius of the column basically so that's 0 0.21 over 2 multiplied by m which is uh, 500 kilonewtons times x all over i which we already know is 6.33 times 10 to the minus 5 so that equals eight to nine times ten to the six X. Um, and remembering that that bending stress will be um, in tension, uh, would, that, that will cause a tensile stress on one side and a compressive stress on the other. What we're seeing is uh, rule one, 34.5 times 10 to the 6 minus 829 times 10 to the 6 x. That's where this compression is acting in opposition to this, so we've got a minus sign. So that's the maximum tensile stress in the column, and that must be less, um, well, greater than minus 15 times 10 to the 6. And therefore, uh, 829 times 10 to the 6 x must be. Um, less than 49.5 times 10 to the 6 and therefore x must be less than 0 0.0597 meters um, I'm going to call that 60 millimeters so that's the rule um, if we're going to get a tension that's less than uh, the smaller a, a maximum tensile stress that's smaller than 15 times 10 to the 6 uh, pascals. There's going, then going to be a second rule which says it's about the maximum compressive stress which is where the axial load and the bending stress add up. So 34.5 times 10 to the 6 plus 8 to 9 times 10 to the 6 x must be less than 75 times 10 to the 6. And therefore, 8 to 9 times 10 to the 6 x must be less than 40.5. Times 10 to the 6, and x must be less than 48.9 um, millimeters approximately. So, one piece of information says if you want the maximum tensile stress to be less than 15 megapascals, you can only have up to 60 millimeters of eccentricity. 
The other says if you want the compressive stress to be less than 75 megapascals, you can only have up to 48.9 millimeters of eccentricity. So the maximum eccentricity is the more restrictive of those two. The maximum allowable eccentricity is 48.9 millimeters. And if you're within 48.9 millimeters, you'll be well within 60 millimeters is the idea. So therefore you'll meet both conditions. And that's the final answer. Um, it's just worth noting that that question um, is a lot quicker and involves a lot less writing than some of the other questions on this paper. So being ready to answer any question can be sensible because not all questions are the same complexity and the same length.